Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. And we're back just like that. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. We have we are candidly with creatine. Yes, creatine. I gotta get my daily dose. Yeah, you know, I, it it that's the truth, as you would say. It is. I didn't. I didn't just believe it. Trust I know. me. I was like, I, I didn't believe it. You were anti supplements. I was. Very much Just so. because I got tainted by a pro bodybuilder. He told me like proteins and all this stuff is just caca. That mm-hmm. they all juice. Basically, he's like, on our level, we all sauce. Basically. Yeah. You know. So it I, tainted me. So Most I said, people don't realize that. And that's why supplement companies actually got a, a really bad name. And it still happens very frequently. But in the bodybuilding community, and I'm talking about like bikini competitors and male bodybuilders. Yes. That Mm -hmm. whole community, they're all like fitness influencers. Yes. And they all are attached to a supplement brand, usually. Like once you climb up the ranks, just like I'm attached to 1UP Nutrition, right? But if I was promoting 1UP Nutrition and then I was saying, look how strong I am. Look how big my muscles are getting. And then you guys find out I'm really because I'm taking steroids. That It's not the 1UP Nutrition. It's the steroids. And I'm just obviously just an example. It ruined the game. Yes, it did. Because people, it's like when pro, when people realized that professional wrestling was fake, like WWE was fake. Yeah. It's like that. Like people, there was a few years back and the bottom fell out of the market of the supplements when it became mainstream that holy shit, everyone that's promoting all these supplement brands, they're actually just sauced on anabolic steroids. Yes. And here they are selling everybody else the supplements that supposedly got them that body. Look who fell from grace. The liver Shreds. king. Shreds. Oh, and, sh- and liver king. Bad. Oh, liver king. Bad. Yeah. He got exposed. Yeah. He tried to lie. Then he doubled down. I do it, but I only take this. Bro, stop it. Homeboy. Yeah, because exactly. <laughs> the liver king. We, and we talked about it when it came out, but he was yes. someone who, he is behind a supplement line. His ancestral yes. supplements. Yes. And it was a very successful supplement brand. And he denied taking the steroids now it's fine because you can still get benefits from supplements while you're if you are taking some sort of what do they call it performance ped performance enhancement drug yes but it's important to be transparent it's the same thing like if i'm selling a wrinkle cream and i take my before picture i go get myself a facelift and then I take and then i take my after picture and i go look guys this wrinkle cream is really amazing and i fail to disclose that I got a facelift in between those photos. Man, that happens a lot, though, yeah, unfortunately. It There's does. a lot of snake oil out there. It does, and that's why it gives it influencers things. a bad name. Yeah. It gives influencers a bad name, and people are just, like, turned off by it a I little know. bit. I know. But it is what it is. got to have integrity in this market, in this world. And, and, and let me tell you something. Like I said, you've been with me, what, 12 years? When did I do creatine? Just till recently. Yeah. Then like more, I did more research, YouTube, Dr. Andrew Huberman, shout out. I respect his, mm-hmm. that guy's a smart dude. Anyways, very knowledgeable. And yeah, I'm getting stronger. Mm-hmm. And I've gone down in body fat and weight. Which, which technically, is, usually, usually. You lose strength, so I don't know. Yep, so coffee and creatine, it is. candidly with creatine it is. And we like 1UP Nutrition because I'm an ambassador for 1UP Nutrition because I love their products. And that's why... Tastes good. I this, love this their is products. Not like, I drank, when I did do try to do creatine back in the days, it's just like I was drink, drinking chemical water. Yeah, it not have, good. No. Those actually taste like crystal light packets in your water. And, like and, they're and good. And it doesn't affect my stomach. I used to get bloat. That's why I got turned off by creatine. You were probably taking too much, too. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Probably. So we did end up going to Mastro's on Friday night. I think we talked about it. And yes, we did in, indulge in the butter cake. Yes, we did. Oh. You guys, it is so good. If you've never gone to Masters and had the butter cake, you need to do it. It's lethal. My it's, goodness. <laughs> Mike really enjoyed it. I did. It was like a race, you guys. Like, Whenever I share something with him, I always have to know I have to eat really fast because when something's really good, it's like a race. He eats so fast, like he doesn't even pause. So if we're sharing it. I'm a fast eater. And we're eating out of the same plate, I'm not going to get that much. <laughs> I had to stop you. Whoa. It's it's because of my childhood. I ain't going to get all deep into it, but I'm a fast eater. Oh, is that why? Of course. Because people would beg for food. You know, kids, yes. Yeah, they're kids. If you got something, so you have to eat 
fast. Kind of. You know, I don't want to be bothered. That's so crazy. (laughs) Everything always goes back to childhood. Not not trying to shame any kids. Kids went to school. Kids project the hood. They didn't have much, much money. I had a little change. I could buy a little extra at the beanery, a little cafeteria. Well, my dad would pack the best lunches because he was at, staying at home for like my grade school years. He didn't work because my brother had cancer and he was his caregiver. Yeah. And so he would pack my lunches and he would pack the best lunches. He'd put candy bars in there and oh, stuff. My and so he would pack extras for like my friends. There would always be extras. Oh. So that I could share. That's nice. But that. my yeah. friends were so jealous of my lunches all the time. And, and you guys, I got the unthinkable when I was in school. Pretty often, probably like once or twice a week, my dad would leave Man. McDonald's up at the front office. Dude, those kids probably were like. So I would get McDonald's. This little. Because my brother was going through cancer treatments, and so whatever he craved, my dad would go all over town and get it, McDonald's or burritos or whatever, because, you know, his appetite was wonky. So when he did that, he would bring me the food, too. And people were so jealous all the time. I bet they were. You're like public enemy number one. Really? My The whole school sees that, and they want McDonald's now. See, my love of food just runs deep to my childhood. Everything 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 goes back to the childhood. Goes back. To childhood. That's why I'm a fast. That's why I'm a fast eater. I think. I never that. even thought about that. Yeah. Some so, things follow you into your adulthood, unfortunately. Yeah. So Masters was really good. I finally caught up on sleep. You guys, last week I had horrible sleep because Phoebe is in heat or starting heat, and she's been very boohooey in the middle of the night, and I have not been sleeping well. I'm still getting up at, as Mike would say, the savage hour, but I'm not sleeping enough to get up at that hour and so yesterday when i got home from orange theory i looked dead i look i must have looked drunk i felt hungover or drunk i didn't have any cocktails you look yeah you did look hungover i was so tired i just i did the couch rotting let's call it couch rotting and i asked you how was your workout because i I felt bad for you like i know it was a rough one it was hard but i still did okay I was able to push through because I had the calories from Mastro's. Yeah. It was, and we walked three miles before it. I almost it. forgot about that. We walked yesterday. Yeah. Because I, I got I was through out it, of it too. But even like I complained a little, and Lisa even said, like, dang, I never hear you complain because I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. And I never do that in class. Yeah. But I was just, I remember thinking halfway through the class, this is one of those times where I should have probably not taken class today. Like my body is screaming at me. Yeah. So I, I did couch rotting, and it was sometimes couch rotting is necessary. And I felt so good. I felt giddy like a little kid. I got comfortable. I got myself a little snack, and I grabbed my Barefoot Dreams blanket. I grabbed my laptop because I did have to do a few things. I put on Lo- um, Love Island and just stayed on the couch until it was time to go to bed. I mean, we deserve it. It was an anniversary weekend. Yeah. But I'll say this. I was couch rotting before you. While I was at the gym, uh, you were couch rotting. Yes. <laughs> but I was tired. You, did you just go to sleep after we went on our walk? I think I took a nap yesterday, yes, in the morning. Yeah. I can't. I, 11 o'clock, or whatever time I fell asleep at, would, to, to four something, five hours is tough. Yeah. I can't. But anyways, <clears throat> I did not want to go to the gym yesterday at all. One bit. I kept trying to talk myself out of it. Oh, man. The dreaded talk yourself out of it. Yeah. Weird, huh? Yeah. And then I was like, hell no. I told myself the night before I'm going to go. Non-negotiable. I finally had an inner bitch moment. Hey, man, stop being a... Yeah. Go handle that. I had to tell myself that. I fired myself up. But the moral of this story is when you don't have the motivation, discipline must kick in. Yes. It has to be non-negotiable. But you, that means that you broke through something yesterday. Remember we talked about that? It's yeah. in those times that yes. you level up your discipline even more. And I got it. What would you say? You're going to be happy. Yeah. Happier than, what did I say? I said you were going to be happier when you got back than when you're leaving right now. Yes. Trust me. When you walked right. out. And yeah, you were all excited when you got home. I just felt fired up because I was just doing some amazing stuff. I don't know. I had just Once I got going, my little things, I did 10 minutes of elliptical just to warm up slow. 10 minutes stair mass at level five, just slow. No, don't touch the rails though. You gotta mm-hmm. work your core and your balance. So that's 20 minutes in. I was already sweating, ready to go. I was warmed mm-hmm. up. By then I was like, yeah, it's on now. 
It's all you nice. need. Break that that first ten minutes of breaking a little sweat and then it's on. Yeah. And today was just walk. Today's active recovery. We just walked. Yeah. yeah. And then it's just walked. I hit the bag a little bit in the garage. Nothing crazy. Oh. Just nothing major. And then we're actually heading to a twenty first birthday party. My cousin's daughter's twenty one. So we're gonna do that. These kids are growing up so fast, I know. huh? Yours was 21 not too long ago. We took him to She's, Vegas, your son, now your daughter. Yeah, so She's, he's Tyler's almost 26 now. Alyssa's going to be 23. Time flies. Crazy. I know. Time <clears throat> flies. Stops for nobody. That's the thing is don't waste time. I, I, when I was 21, I was pregnant with regular. Tyler in a Reno casino, <laughs> and I won a $300, $378 jackpot on the slots. Wow. And 25 almost 26 years ago that's a lot of money that was a lot of money that's probably like equivalent to a thousand dollars it was equivalent to half my rent because my rent back then was eight hundred dollars a month and can you imagine i won half my rent wow for the whole month that's crazy that was like i remember i was screaming up and down and elizabeth's gonna have the baby relax wow a win's a win yeah i was was very because that was what i did for my 21st because i couldn't drink so i went with my parents robert wasn't even there and i can't remember why he didn't go but it was my parents danny and elizabeth my my brother and sister and we took a bus like one of those portuguese people like get a bus that goes to the casinos and they party the whole way on the bus Uh they drink and tell stories (laughs) and watch bullfights on the tvs bullfights yeah that's right so that's what we did yeah, it was fun. Cool. That's what I did for my 21st. Wow. Interesting. What a, what a little adventure you went on. Yes, what an adventure. All right, hot coffee topic. There is a writer's strike going on, as many of you guys probably know. If you don't know, you're going to feel it in about a year. Trust me. No the writer's strike and the actor's strike is going on. And I thought it was a funny story. This plastic surgeon who I'm actually I've actually been to for a consult before Dr. Ben Talay he was on TMZ I went to him to consult to do my nose job like 10 years ago which I never got got by the way this is my natural nose but uh, he came on and said that he is working like double time because all the A and B list celebrities so the celebrities that have money but are now not working because of the strike are getting in all their surgeries like all their really invasive like facelifts and things like that yeah because remember during the pandemic like it was like you couldn't do none of that remember how doctors were so booked out yeah the, because of that the pandemic you could do it you could get in they were that's it was like a gold rush for plastic surgeons oh, during the pandemic they blew up that's great right. but that's why this doctor said i knew based on what i went through with the pandemic I knew that, okay, how are we going to accommodate the most possible surgeries? He's working weekends. He's, like, booking out more. He's going after it. He's going after it. Of course, you have to. You got to strike when the iron's hot. That's what you always say, right? Yeah. You have to, like, he knew, oh, wow, I'm getting a second chance at what went down in the the pandemic. Like, pretty crazy. But rumor has it that reality TV stars might be joining in as well because Bethany Frankel from Real Housewives in New York just got hired two high-powered attorneys she's got getting people together to fight for better pay and better rights for reality stars yeah yeah because these networks are making money hand over fist from the advertisers and the the reality stars do not get residuals yeah that's not cool you and know. now that they're streaming apps so when these reality stars signed up for these shows years ago like bethany she did it years ago roni real housewives in new york They didn't have streaming apps. Now they have Peacock. It has every single season of Real Housewives in New York. Yeah. She doesn't make a a one red cent off of those old seasons. And she said she got paid $7,500 for the first season of Real Housewives in New York. They didn't know any better. So we might be losing, if they bind together and enough reality stars, we might be at a loss for content for reality TV too. So no movies, no sitcoms. Yeah, crazy. Well, everybody's going to be watching YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> That's really it. I Everyone's going to binge all of our past podcast episodes. Oh, that'd be nice. Maybe. Moving on to, it was so funny. When I was writing notes for this podcast, I thought I actually had it written in here. Oh, wow. Everyone behaved themselves this week. There's no hold my coffee comment. As I typed that, a comment came through on my TikTok. Oh, I was boy. like, oh, no. Oh, it wasn't boy. a big. It wasn't a big deal, but yeah. it was on the... A video I posted, a clip from last week's podcast that was talking about hangover anxiety and how I didn't realize that 
my drink that I was having on Saturday mornings was affecting my whole weekend and giving me anxiety and causing my weekend to not be productive. And the video is actually doing quite well. And a lot of people can relate to that, like Mm -hmm. not realizing the impact of even a small amount of alcohol. But someone commented and said, I'm sure this is common sense. Obviously not, because a lot of people are like, wow, I didn't even think about that. No, I don't think it's common knowledge or common sense that when you drink alcohol that your body pumps you full of adrenaline and cortisol. I don't think that's common knowledge. It's not. That person's just spewing again. They just wanted to shout out because they they can. Yeah. That's like stupid. No, actually... And her... And of course, it's a troll because her name on TikTok is called, first of all... So she's a troll because her, her, her name on TikTok is first of all. Yeah. So she, that means she's trolls people. I'm like, first of all, that's yeah. not true because that's yeah. 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 Anyway. Shut up with your bro signs. You don't know. Go nothing. have fun on TikTok. Yeah. Stay over there. Yeah. Stay, stay on TikTok. Leave YouTube alone. On an, YouTube is where my people. Self. <laughs> YouTube is where my people are. And speaking of which, thank yeah. you guys so much for all the support of my channel. My channel has grown significantly. I think I'm at like 8,200 plus subscribers hey. here. We're going for 20K. That's my next 20. goal. Come so on, you, you guys, guys help her get a 20. You guys Let's can go. help me if you're listening. LFG. Are you done? Yes. Okay. If you're listening, you can hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed because it does help me. It really does. And then you can comment on the videos. That helps us with that algorithm, that annoying word, the algorithm. The algorithm. But it does. Algorithm. Do you know, just to give, give you a little feedback on YouTube, YouTube is an interesting animal you could have somebody who has a million subscribers and at one point in time they posted videos every day and the videos got hundreds of thousands of views if that person say takes a year off of youtube even though their subscribers remain pretty close like a million subscribers if they start posting videos they don't just automatically go back to a lot of views they'll be like 500 views Um, thousand views interesting because they fall off the algorithm yeah you have to be real consistent it's like a machine this youtube um but comment corner goes out to kim's 1941 who writes i had 85 pounds to lose and it still took a year to lose 50 pounds it was another five years before the other 35 gradually came off but it's now been nine years since the entire 85 pounds came off. I've sustained the weight loss and I'm 61. Amazing. Congratulations yeah. and amazing. She That's... was commenting where we were talking about how difficult it is to maintain and how it's hard, a little easier to get to the dance, but hard to yes. stay at the dance. Yes. Staying at the dance is another ball game in itself. And even to layer something onto that, it's much easier to lose that first 50 than it is to lose that last 35. Oh, yeah. So what she was able to do, like, keep going, like, that's very commendable. And I know firsthand. So good job to you. Yes. Because that's amazing. Plus maintaining it for nine years. That's crazy. So a total of how much weight? She's lost 85 pounds. Oh, that's, yeah. And maintained it for nine years. See? 61 years old. Yep. Kim's 1941. Thank you for that. That's very motivating. Okay. Now, Shauna T., K79 writes, I love your videos. I worked with you years ago as a client and I just appreciate all the content you share and help you offer all of us 40 plus babes. Would you ever consider making a video about your journey as an online trainer started this past year and I'd love to hear your insight. Thanks so much. I'll definitely talk about this more like in my other YouTube videos as well. But I can tell you how I started as an online trainer I've always been, I've always helped people with weight loss since I had my transformation. So years ago. So you got to understand when you go through a transformation, everyone and their brother comes out of the woodworks. And what do they say, Mike? How How? did you do the impossible? (laughs) They, they're so shocked. Yes. That they either ask you how and want their your help or they assume that you did some crazy shortcut or whatever and start rumors about you, which is what happened to me. But I ended up helping for many years my what I'll call my warm market. I've always helped family members. I helped my mom lose weight several times. I've just helped. And through the process of helping my warm market, I gained a lot of knowledge and through the process of maintaining my own weight loss. So that's how I started as a trainer. Now, online, how it started is because I prepped for a bikini show. And during that prep, 
my transformation was pretty amazing as well. Like I, I transformed from like a, a, a average kind of like thin, not a lot of muscle person to a bodybuilder physique in 11 weeks. And with that transformation came a lot of clout on Instagram. This is when Instagram was pretty new. Yeah, It yeah. was when if a picture like caught wind, if someone found it through a hashtag or if my coach posted my transformation, yes. you could get a thousand followers yep. just off that one picture. That's that true. doesn't really happen too much anymore. So I got a lot of following from that. So once I built a little following, maybe I got up to I had a normal Instagram account that was like little normal. Once I built up like, to 10,000 followers, then it started, I realized, okay, I built this following for, through fitness and stuff like that. And so that's how I built a following because it had to have a following to become an online coach initially. Yeah. But the, really what I would say is social proof, just start helping people and help people for free, like your warm market, but help them and let hopefully they'll allow you to share their results yes. because that is what will get you more clients. Results attract more clients and it snowballs from there in terms of getting attracting your clients. It's in the results. But one thing I have to say is be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. Do not try to attract, change yourself so that you can attract more clients because you're not going to attract the right clients. Weren't we just talking about that today? Attract yeah. your tribe. You attract your tribe. Be like, unapologetically yourself and you will attract the right clients for you because although there's many people who need help on this journey you are not right for every one of them i'm not right for a lot of people nope. so i'm very open about the style that i am so that i attract the right people that are going to be successful with my style yes because not everybody will nope that's what i would recommend we're all not meant to be for each other. Yeah. That's just the way life is. That's why, like, even you sometimes, we talk about, like, your YouTube channel. And I'm like, make sure you just be unapologetically yourself. Because yeah. you don't worry about what people think or anything like that. Because people like authenticity. They can smell authenticity. Yeah. yeah. They, they really can. And even though they may not be like you, or even not even relate to you, they may still be interested in watching you and yeah, working with you because yeah. they're intrigued. Stories. Yes. Stories. And also, honestly, if you're going to be an online trainer, make sure you educate, educate yourself, constantly educate yourself. Think about what your value is that you're going to add. Help your warm market. And this is one caveat I will leave you with because I've had a lot of clients transition to coaches which I think is great. Sometimes some of them would do it secretly because they're afraid that, that I'm going to be upset by that by, for whatever reason. I think, it's, I think it's awesome because if yeah. you coach someone so well to where they want to do it too, that's yeah. an ultimate compliment actually. Yeah, you did your job. But one piece of advice I would give to you is don't take it personal. Not Most people won't listen to you. Nope. So don't take it personal. Don't take it personal if you're telling someone what to do and you know that what you have to, for them to do is going to get them the results they need, but they don't do it. It's not your fault. It's not. I, and you know what? Let's touch on that because as a trainer, it just wasn't set up for success back then. I could train you. You mean what, back mean? in the... Give a little background. Let's back see. When. Okay, we're talking. Let's go back 13 years when okay. I was actively training. Yeah. We didn't have the proper data, how to really structure meal plans and macros, like what we have today. Mm -hmm. It's way different. Today's right. a game changer. Right. It's so much. I understand people don't understand the language, but once you learn it, it's simple. It really is. You used to tell me, like, watch, you'll learn it. It's simple. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. Back then, we, we were guessing. We didn't mm -hmm. have the right tools. So right. That being said, is when my clients weren't having results or losing weight, I took it upon. Sometimes you would think, guilty. man, I'm not, they're paying all this money for me as a trainer and they're not getting results and you feel guilty about it. Yes. Yes. yes like that, not, and there's, there's others who do listen to me and follow the plan and have great results. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this one's listening. Yeah. And when you're a new coach, you take it personal because you think, oh my God, you start to get like imposter syndrome. Oh my God, maybe I'm giving them the wrong advice. I'm giving them the wrong macros. I'm doing something wrong. 
No. It's not you. It's them. Try, yeah. Trust me. And, and this is what, I, what did I tell you? And I used to tell them this straight up. I can't stop you from going to your pantry mm -hmm. or your fridge mm -hmm. or going through the drive-thru. That's impossible. No trainer on planet Earth. No motivational speaker on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Not nobody can stop you. Only you. It, only you. And that's where accountability comes in. You got to be accountable to right. yourself. You got to be non-negotiable. You can't. You're not going to eat fast food for a month. Well, write, it, write it in blood. <laughs> what do we say? No chips for a month or donuts? We yeah. already done that. Yeah. It's already passed. We, didn't even we just did it and set our mind to it. We're just making examples. Well, that's the thing, too, that's very important if you want to be a coach or help people. Practice what you preach. Yes. 100% practice yes. what you preach. It may not be exactly the same because, listen, not everybody has the same nutrition plan or exercise plan. That's another thing. You don't want cookie cutter plans. It's got to be customized nope. for the person. Yep. But in general, practice what you, what you preach. If I have a client who tells me, hey, you know what? You're right. I'm drinking too much. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to drink alcohol for the next month. Yep. I want them to not actually drink alcohol for the next month. They're committing. They're making that commitment to themselves. Yes. So if I am going to tell you guys, hey, I'm not going to do chips for a month or drink alcohol, whatever it is, and then I can't do it, how can I expect my clients to keep those commitments to themselves if I can't keep the commitment to myself? Hello. And that's what I mean. Like you better be ready, willing, and able as a coach to do every single thing yes. that you expect out of your clients. And that's what makes a good coach. Because let me tell you something. You put it out there, you were doing that. And you're a public figure. People are recognized oh, right. you come up to you. So imagine you're out eating. Let's just say you're at Luna with your cousin and, and some people saw recognize you. Mm -hmm. you. Bust out the little camera like she's eating chicken. The irony you. is you the day saying? after like, I made that proclamation on the podcast, we were at El Cabron we and there was chips on the table. Yes. And I didn't touch them, nope. but there was somebody who recognized me right, from social media. That. Yes, She could have been like, you liar. I saw you eating chips. I watched you for yeah. an hour before I approached Dip, you. Dipping into the guac and the sauce. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Yes. Remember that, you guys. Yeah, that's true. That's a, that's a bit of advice for you trainers out there. But yeah, be willing, for sure. Be willing to Insane. do the things. Like if you're going to tell your clients, get up at 5 a.m., do this workout before you go to work, you have the time, yada, yada. But here you are skipping your workouts because you're staying out late and you're getting up late. That's not going to work. Yeah. You do have to practice what you preach for you sure. Do. And because people, like I said, people smell authenticity. You got to be a pro in your they craft. Do. Yes. Yes. And best of luck to you. And just remember, it's, it's like it grows. It grows. You just have to be patient. Yeah. This game is very psychological too. You it's more I mean? psychological than anything else. Yes. Than physical. It's more the mental battles than the yes. actual tasks at hand. Yes. Definitely. Okay, I want to go over some FAQs of the week, just some questions that have popped up over the course of the week that I thought were good questions, and I figure if listeners are probably getting them too. <clears throat> so I had someone ask me, how do I get rid of the fat behind my knee? Just want to answer this here in case anyone is, has any fat in a place that you don't like it to be under your arms, in your back. Chicken on your wings. face, wherever it may be, you cannot spot reduce fat. Cannot. You can Google that and look it up yourself, but you cannot. That's true. They don't need to Google it because I just told them. I know. I'm just saying. Like, I don't know. I don't really believe. There's always those doubters I want. Yeah. Google. Yourself. You cannot. Yes. You can't. It just doesn't. Okay. Then the the question is, then how do I get rid of this fat behind my knee? You have to go into a calorie deficit and keep losing the body fat until the fat behind your knee is gone. And you cannot... Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it because everybody's body melts fat differently. You know yeah, I mean? it goes to different areas and yes. different places. Now, if you are very thin and you have some fat behind your knee that just never went away, that would be the job of plastic surgeon. Or yeah. procedure there, they could be do some sort of like a low invasive lipo or something like that to target a stubborn area that doesn't match up with like your body because it could be a lipoma there. Sometimes people get like a accumulation of fat yeah. in an area. It's like overactive fat cells. I want my rib. And you can get that taken out from like a dermatologist. So yeah, but you cannot do an exercise to get rid of it that will not always want remember that when you exercise something when you work something out the muscle is growing and it has nothing to do with the fat it does a lot of another common thing people say that it will debunk right now yeah 
Muscle does not turn into fat. And fat does not turn into muscle. They are two different things. You know how long I've heard that for? I just said since the 90s. Yeah. Dude, where do you get your signs? A your, muscle your, is a muscle. Yes, a muscle is a muscle. It either shrinks or grows, but it does not magically convert into fat cells. <laughs> it's totally different. That's hilarious. Completely different. But there's a lot of people that believe that. I know they do. And they and here's the thing. When you hear that for so many damn years, mm -hmm. 10, 20 years. Yeah. You're, it's ingrained in your brain. You don't want to believe anything else. So like, like they have shutters. Yeah. I'm like, dude, it's not real. It's not. So Please. if you understand that fat doesn't turn into muscle, no, then maybe you'll understand that you can't work off fat. So if you are working out, so say you are lifting a, a dumbbell to work on your bicep and you're doing it because you want to get rid of the fat on your arms. The only thing that bicep curl is going to do is going to make your bicep muscle larger. Yes. It's not going to do anything with the fat that lays on top of that muscle unless you are in a calorie deficit and yes. shrink those fat cells. And only a calorie deficit can do that. So although it's beneficial to do the resistance training and grow the bicep muscle so that when you do lose that fat, you have a nice toned bulbous yep. bicep muscle the the exercise itself is not getting rid of the fat it's doing nothing with it no at all same thing for your triceps people doing tricep press downs because to lose this yeah the chicken wing yeah no no it's fat it's fat it's fat yep so that is a very, those are some common questions. Another one is when, and I'm actually going to have a sandwich on my meal plan this week. So I'm going to get this question a lot this week. So let me just put it out there right now. People will ask me, what kind of bread is that? It's regular bread, sourdough bread, but sourdough it's bread. bread. It's not diet bread. It's not low carb bread. It's, it's not, not keto bread. Keto bread. It's just bread from the beautiful and glorious bakery department, fresh baked. It sprouts. Yes. It's sliced. It is bread. Bread is perfectly fine to eat. Do not villainize it. it can, you can eat it. Sourdough especially is very easy to digest. Of all the types of bread, sourdough is the best on the gut. My favorite too, of all time. And yes, you can eat bread. And the other question of the week, isn't that bad for you? And this is just insert this here. It's like a blank, right? Isn't that bad for you? If someone says, sees this, isn't that bad for you? They see a Diet Coke. Isn't that bad for you? Or they see me use Splenda in my coffee. Isn't that bad for you? Yeah. The only bad food is the food that makes you feel bad. If you eat artificial sweeteners and get bloated, artificial sweeteners are not for you. Exactly. Because you are sensitive to artificial sweeteners. If you eat cheese and it makes you have diarrhea, <laughs> yeah. then cheese is bad for you. But cheese is not bad for me. It's actually highly nutritious, loaded with protein, and it doesn't give me diarrhea. And that's another thing people don't realize is no one does food allergy tests on themselves. So they don't know what is good and what is not. They're guesstimating. You know what I'm saying? They're guessing. So yeah. So people just assume they that assume. things either are bad or good because this is a junk food and this is this. And I, I heard that and I heard this. Yes. When the only thing that's going to determine whether something is bad is if it is bad for you specifically. Maybe you have gout and you can't eat protein. So yep. Susie Q. Sorry. <laughs> Susie Q is promoting eat a high protein diet, yada, yada, yada. And someone go, but isn't protein bad? It's bad for a person who has gout and can't eat red meat. Yes, It's bad for terrible. someone who has a diagnosed kidney dysfunction and can't digest protein. So it is great for most, bad for some. And that's how you determine whether something is bad or good. Not based off of what society has labeled as bad or good. Yeah. And please, people, stop with the I heard. I heard. Who'd you hear from? Cite your source. They, I heard. I know. Because then you heard it from a hundred different people. It's been twisted around a thousand yep. different times. All right, moving on. So I scheduled something tomorrow that I'm going to go do. So you guys, I've been, I went on down the rabbit hole of peptides. I went down the peptide rabbit hole yesterday when I was having my couch rotting. I wasn't so much couch rotting because I was reading about peptides. As you guys know, there's a lot of stuff in the media. Semaglutide is a peptide. 
like Ozempic, Wagovi, those are all different peptides. There's multiple different weight loss peptides. There's a lot of research going into peptides. So I'm going to read you guys a little something. According to the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, peptides are the cutting edge non-toxic amino acid sequences that are newly emerging in the science of cell signaling with far-reaching regulatory and rejuvenation actions on neurologic, immune, and hormone functionality. The specifically targeted use of peptides has a potential to rewrite bodily chemistry relationships and ultimately generate a restorative trend towards health, wellness, homeostasis, a.k.a. the fountain of youth. A.k.a. the fountain it's, of it's, youth. They're, it's amino acids that literally go into the cells and like reprogram cells, and they're very specific. There's a peptide for lots of different functions. Wow. And it's sending something in to rewrite the DNA of something. Obviously, I'm saying this in the wrongest way possible. But anyways, yeah, people. it's very much so like the semoglutide. What it does is it sends a little message to the brain that you don't really want food. It's that it's working with the hypothalamus and it's stimulating the GLP-1 hormone. So that's what the semoglutide peptide does. There's a peptide and I actually was caught a clip from the Mind Pump podcast. And that what that's what sent me down the rabbit hole because one of the hosts there is trying a peptide called yeah. MOTS C. It is a mitochondrial der derived peptide. It promotes metabolic homeostasis and longevity. It improves exercise capacity, reduces obesity, insulin resistance, and other disease processes such as osteoporosis. So now, of course, the marketing on it is like it's a replacement for exercise. No, but it's not really a replacement for exercise, but it's supposed to make you have better energy production, like to get a more effective workout. Oh, wow. It's supposed to... I signed up. It's one of the most powerful mitochondrial enhancers available. It provides, let's see, basically like cellular aging and energy, the way our cells convert, are able to convert fat into energy. It's similar to where like when someone's in ketosis and it forces them to use stored body fat. Yeah. as energy and yes. it makes that process a little easier because the body's using it as energy this is similar to that and it is an injection and it the recommended dosing is one to two times a week over the course of four four to six weeks what i read from this wellness spa is they recommend one shot every five days and you do that four times and then you wait a few months and you do one more cycle of that so i scheduled i'm gonna go get it done tomorrow my first wow. one because i'm just curious i love being a guinea pig I'm, yeah you got my you sparked my curiosity and this interest for too, me this is what i need i need something that's going to help me even have better workouts like more effective workouts and yeah. i don't mind being a guinea pig but there's lots of different peptides you guys and so much there's so much advancements in the world of the fountain of youth oh, and sure. because why do we age we age because our cells age. Yes. Our cells start to age and die. That's why our skin slowly starts wrinkling. It's all cellular. So if they can have advancements in changing the cell at the cellular level, yeah. then that's when the true results come. Not a body, not a facial cream to get rid of your wrinkles. It's like something intracellular. In, inter, in, in, part of your DNA is way different. Because there was another one that I had heard Dr. Huberman talk about, and that was NAD. I heard and it. NAD is also like at the fountain of youth. So this particular clinic has NAD as well. And NAD is an essential cofactor in multiple cellular metabolic reactions and has a central role in energy production. It's been shown to suppress age-associated body weight gain, enhance energy metabolism, and promote physical activity. It's also been shown to Im improve eye function. They mm. actually said on this that. site that NAD is a good substance to inject directly into a problem area. So if you have issues with your shoulder, you have an NAD injection into the actually, troubled I do my shoulder. Right shoulder. Yeah. Wow. 
Also, NAD is also being used as a treatment for, as an add-on treatment for people who are struggling with addiction. So it's not instead of therapy or it's not instead of like a rehab, but it can help eliminate the withdrawal symptoms from substance abuse. Yeah intravenous substance abuse or alcoholism and a lot of people or treatment facilities are incorporating this NAD therapy into that there is just very cool stuff happening like in research what did I tell you that we're going to be alive someday to witness where I was going to say what I don't know I forgot how I said it too but you're 47 Mm -hmm. imagine 30 years from now, and you still look like this. We're going to someday be alive to witness this. It's going to yeah. be insane, huh? We're I know. Gonna... I'm like, well, I hope it's not too late for me. Like, people in their 50s will probably look like they're in their 20s. Nah, I mean, you just never know. They're just, it, science is crazy. We're advancing fast. We're in the era, things are going so quickly. AI is advancing quickly. And AI is pushing science to advance even faster. Yeah, so, so it says here, the specifically targeted use of peptides has the potential to rewrite bodily chemistry relationships. It's crazy. Peptides can be utilized and applied in a treatment of injuries with capabilities that help prevent chronic disease and enhance peak performance. Man, there's so much. I'm gonna, I'm got me super sparked. I know. So I thought, you know what? I just want to. I I need to just get into a clinic because I want to see if I can talk to them about these different things. So I just scheduled the Mott C, not a consult. I scheduled an injection of the Mott C. I just wanted to like see what the process is and yeah. And just give it a go and let everyone know what I think. Everyone's, oh, semaglutide. Listen, I can't take that. I have no, I don't have, No. what's that going to do for me? I, but what can I do? I'm always yeah. looking for the latest and greatest yeah. magic pill. Why not? I've always told you guys, I'll be the first to poo-pooey something for sure and say, sorry, it's not worth it. Yeah. But I'm also open-minded. I'm not going to say nothing ever works, nothing ever works, nothing ever will work. Because that's just closed-minded. There's lots of advancements that are happening in technology. There's lots of things I hear doctors and stuff talk about. So you, I don't want to be left behind. I'm, I'm perfectly okay with being early adopter of things so that I can talk about it because maybe you have never even heard of MOTC or peptides besides Ozempic because that went viral. Maybe you guys are listening and you didn't even know there was like dozens of other peptides and they all have a different focus of different things they can do and you can go into these wellness spas and create like a cocktail so if what is a semi-glutide semi-glutide that works then why doesn't these other ones work you know what i'm saying that and that was working wonders we know that people are having results yeah with their appetite suppressing there's an immunity peptide for i wanted tyler to look at some of these for a lot of like autoimmune type stuff you should Mm mm-hmm there's lots of different things, but yeah, so the MOTC is, they call it the healthy mitochondrial blueprint. And it's not outrageously expensive, but the process, if you figure if I needed four injections over the course of a couple of months, it would be somewhere in the range of maybe $1,000 total over the course of the whole series. And then maybe you wait a few months and you do it again. If I have results and it has this, it, it actually, so in this, I can't think of who's the host of the mind pump that, that's the guy you don't know. Oh, Sal? Sal. So Sal got I his first now, injection yeah. and he said that it, it felt like it heated him up internally. And it does, I think that's the energy production because with energy production right comes heat. I'm doing it. And so he felt like internal heat that's all he's felt so far and he's going to do a series two or whatever but i'm like fuck that i'm not going to wait to hear what it's like for him i want to try it right now Shit. me too <laughs> all those older folks need some help man <laughs> nothing wrong with that anyways but Take you it. guys yeah. can come along for the ride with us because we will share it with you and yeah. maybe it's nothing maybe i feel absolutely nothing maybe i have some bad side effects from it whatever everything i read was pretty supportive of a good outcome, but you never know. Yeah. You, know? you never yeah. know. But I'm willing to try it. Yeah. And you're not gonna you're gonna be the bearer of either good news or bad news. Yeah, like I get nothing honest. from this. If no. I, I this is nothing No, there's nothing attached. I'm not to. trying to gain any financial gain from this. I'm just trying to I get excited I of level up. I get excited about things that could potentially help people to reach the next level, like you said, level up or get yes. to their goals. That's why I got so excited with Ozempic. Truth be told, 
Ozempic coming out and being the huge thing didn't help my business whatsoever because people are investing money in Ozempic and not coaches now. Exactly. So I didn't do that with an agenda. I support Ozempic and I supported it with no agenda because it does not help my business. I, you know, this particular thing, it's just self-serving because I would like it to help me, but I'm also willing to share it with you guys and say, hey, but this is a perfect example of, say I did this, didn't tell anybody. Yes. Kept it a secret. And suddenly, like, I was a freaking beast in the gym and I got super shredded and muscular and then I gave all all the credit to creatine because I make money off of when I sell creatine. Uh, so this is where yes. you have to be, to me, People, yes. transparency comes into yes. place. It's, listen, guys, less, yes, I love my creatine and I do take it, but I'm also doing this. Yeah. And take it for what you will. I personally like to do all the things. Any little leg up I can get, I like to do it if I feel like there's some credibility. That's there. like me. I'm honest. Like people ask me, hey, are you on TRT? Because everybody's noting chains. Like, yeah, dude, I'm not. But I, when you, when and if, when and if I ever do get on it, for sure, I'll let I'll let people. I'm not gonna hide it. I, mm -hmm. I take creatine really in my vitamins. That's yeah, it. and then pro, a yeah, lot we of do have a pretty intense supplement routine. We take a lot of supplements. We do a lot of vitamins, and I stand behind them a thousand percent because I feel really good. I'm sleeping better, I yeah. have more energy. I feel better. I feel yeah, like I too. know that. Yeah, I just, I'm a believer in supplementation. I am. And I tweak things as I go and I add more things. And some people think, oh my God, that's crazy. In my 20s and 30s, I was sick all the time. I was tired all the time. Same here. I didn't feel good. Mm -mm. Not like I do now. I wish we, I wish I had this knowledge, even in my 30s. Yeah. We had this. I know. But, but we're here now. It's not too late. Now. And that's why we share. So you come to yes. us because we're not uh, gatekeepers. Okay. We share the info. Yeah. We don't hoard it. Yeah. No hoarding. No, because like I said, and if I don't have anything to gain from Mott C, unless someone comes down the pike and says, hey, Janine, you want this, that, and the other free injections or whatever, but yeah, but I'll be transparent about it because exactly. I don't know. Who cares? No. Right? Yeah. If it works, man, that's wonderful. You know what I mean? Everybody's going to want to do it. I'm, I'm super interested for myself now, especially my shoulder, the one that bothered me. I know. I don't remember which one was good for the shoulder, but there was something. NAD? No. Was it the NAD? I don't know if that's the one. You might have to ask them. NAD was like a super energy one. There's lots of good stuff here. I don't know. I'm all about it, guys. All right, you guys. Yeah. We're excited for something new. I'm, share I'm sharing prematurely because it could be a, a train wreck. But if it is, I'll let you guys know that too. Yeah, exactly. At least you're willing to give it a shot. Yeah. You know, open minded. All right, you guys, have a great Monday. Yes. And we'll see you guys again on Friday. See ya.